our Australian Graham. <laughs> our Australian Grand Prix F1 driver ratings. This video is sponsored by the wonderful people over at Squarespace, the all-in-one website platform for entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online. Before we dive into this, just want to shout out the P1 Live show. We are literally only a few weeks away now. We would love to have you at either Cambridge, Bath or London. I feel like Cambridge or is it Bath? One of them has sold out. Cambridge. Do you remember, Tommy? Yes, Cambridge, Cambridge is sold out. So Bath and London, if you want to come and see me and Tommy, get a little bit saucy on stage. That sounds weird. It's not that kind of show. <laughs> Wow. Not that kind of show, but you know what I'm saying. We'd love to have you there. So uh, link is all over our social media. And uh, if you just type in P1 Live Show as well, I'm sure it'll come up on Google. Thank you very much. Right, let's begin with Kevin Magnuson. Qualified 14th, started 14th, finished 10th. I'm going to lock in 7 out of 10. I think that he had a, a decent race. I don't think it wasn't as comparable to Hulkenberg, especially when you think of Magnuson starting a few positions ahead of his teammate, um, you might you might think that okay, K Mag might actually might actually do something in the race and be a bit quicker than Hulk, but no, that didn't really happen. I did think if George Russell didn't bin it, he wouldn't have scored a point, and I would have given him seven out of ten. So I don't feel like I can grade him an eight just because George crashed on the final lap. Do you see what I mean? I see what you mean. Not that I agree because I've gone <laughs> for an eight out of ten. I've got points, and um, yeah, what what a start for Haas, and uh, it was a nice little battle with Alban. Thankfully, kept it clean and uh, got some, well, a point on the board for Haas. The fans gave him an eight. Nico Hulkenberg now qualified 16th, started 16th and finished 9th. I've gone for a nine out of 10. It's, it's a very impressive drive to be ninth in a Haas. We will get on to it late, later in the year if Haas are genuinely <laughs> quite, quite good and this is a, a regular thing. But at the moment, it does feel like a win for Haas to be in. Uh, up in P9 and it was a good drive. I think he was unfortunate to get blocked in qualifying so we know how uh, well he can do. So well done, Nico Hulkenberg. Well done, Nico. I've gone for an 8 out of 10. Yeah, a great performance from, from Haas overall and three points is something that I don't think they would have uh, expected. Well, Komatsu didn't expect anything at the start of the season, but they are certainly uh, under... under... Predi no, under... 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 You know, it's like a... Anyway, well done, Haas! <laughs> Cho Guan Yu qualified 19th, started from the pit lane and finished 15th. I have gone for a 5 out of 10 for Zhou Guan Yu. Because what are you doing, Stake F1 team? What are you doing? You look like a bunch of clowns. Like... Neon clowns. Do they know how to run a Formula 1 team? Do they know that in the pits is supposed to be the quickest pit stop possible? Bottas has probably now had a longer pit stop in the or combined longer pit stops for the first three races than maybe two seasons combined what what yeah. are they doing it is an absolute disgrace of course he, he had his car modified under park ferme then suffered a gearbox issue during the second pit stop which cost uh joe loads of time it sounds savage but i'm absolutely sick of Joe Guanyu and Valtteri Bottas, two you know, decent drivers. Joe, in particular, is you know a young driver wanting to perform, but I feel like he's always hindered by stuff. So get it together, Stake. I've gone for a five for Joe Guanyu as well. It was all undone in the pit stops, really, wasn't it? So shocking. Certainly was. The fans uh, gave. Have I said the fans for the last few? I can't remember. Oh yes, I think so. I think the I fans know. gave Nico Hulkenberg an eight. And they gave Zhou Guan Yu a five. Let's quickly chat about our sponsor for this video, Squarespace, a place where you can build a website with absolutely no coding knowledge required. What's better too is that you can create one for free and only start paying once you decide to go ahead and publish your website. There are thousands of drag and drop best in class templates to select from to allow your creativity to flow. What's better yet is that you can continue to improve your website as well with the use of analytics to know what's working and what isn't. So what are you waiting for? Head to squarespace.com forward slash P1 to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain using the code P1. Valtteri Bottas, qualified 13th, started 13th, finished 14th. I have gone 
for a 7 out of 10 for Valtteri Bottas because I think he would have got points without the useless pit stop. I think he qualified very well for the neon dustbin as you referred to them in the race pod and uh, he was actually running in P11 when he had his bad pit stop. The way the race ran points would have been an option he might have been up there with with the Hasses. I can't really downgrade him for uh, his useless team so I'm giving him a 7. Valtteri I've gone for a 6 out of 10 um, as you say running very strongly and then <laughs> cross threading the will nut and and it rolling off down the pit lane. And I mean, it's just literally something out of a comedy sketch uh, when it comes to their pit stops at the moment. And the fans gave Valtteri Bottas a five. Yuki Tsunoda. Well, five eighth, started eighth, finished seventh. I am going for Yuki Tsunoda, a 10 out of 10. He is getting full marks for a fantastic weekend. I said this year, I'm going to try and Yuki doesn't have to score a podium in order to, to, to score a 10 because he's in an RB. He flat out destroyed race winner Daniel Ricciardo, multiple race winner Daniel Ricciardo, and had a, 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 a pretty flawless weekend. Four, six points, whatever it might be, Yuki did a fantastic job and it deserves to be commended. It sure does. I've also given him a 10 out of 10. It is basically like a victory in Formula B, isn't it? Um, because they're never going to get anywhere well, in these cars. now, really, isn't it? Well, because yeah, true. Got... The staff Red and Bull, then you've got then everyone else. <laughs> he's he's absolutely smashing it in qualifying. He's performing extremely well, and then he had a race to to back it up as well. It's not why I support Yuki Tsunoda, but it is from a from a results point of view. I actually I've kind of enjoyed the fact that he's managed to just string a normal race together where we've not really had to see him. He didn't really have to make any overtakes or do anything crazy. He just delivered the best of what he needed to do. Daniel Ricciardo. And the fans gave him Oh a my nine. God, Matt, please remember the fans. There are <laughs> grades. I am still not used to this being part of driver ratings, but <laughs> the fans gave Yuki a nine. Daniel Ricciardo qualified 18th, started 18th, finished 12th. Daniel Ricciardo, I've gone four, a four out of 10. A shocking weekend, really. You look on, on paper, actually, and he's finished 12th. It's not shocking, like, you should be getting a 1 or 2 out of 10, but I think it has justified the criticism he's getting because Yuki performed so well and has essentially finished, well, he's finished the race in 7th. So when you're a long way behind your teammate and we're seeing a trend this year of teammates finishing 2 by 2 I think you do have to harshly grade someone when they finish so so far behind their teammate. Disaster so far, and he's got a bit of pressure on him now. I think even Helmut Marco has said he needs to step up. Yeah, I think he said Helmut said both of them need to step up, and Yuki's done exactly that uh, this weekend. I have gone for a 3 out of 10 for Daniel Ricciardo. Uh, it wasn't even close in qualifying to him not exceeding track limits. He went off to Narnia and came back at turn 5, I think it was. Uh, which you know ruined his, his race weekend, starting 18th. Good luck at this stage. And obviously finishing 12th, as you say, on paper, not bad. But who did he finish uh, higher? <laughs> the two Alpines, one of which had an extra pit stop to get something out of their brake duct for, for Ocon. Uh, the two Kicksalbers that had a collective pit stop time of four and a half days. And then Gasly, who's also driving a tractor. Logan, uh, no, oh the fans. The fans <laughs> gave Daniel Ricciardo three out of 10. Logan Sargent qualified in sad face, started in sad face and finished in sad face. That's what it says in our document, so I'm going to read it out loud. Now we need to discuss what on earth we're going to do with Logan Sargent because um, Alex Albon stole his car, stole the keys, got in it and and drove around uh, this weekend. It's either a 10 or an NA. It's got to be an it NA. It can't I... be a 10, unfortunately, even though the fans, the fans voted a 10. Quite amusing that... Um he got removed from the driver of the day vote because so many people were voting for him. F1 fans, if you give them a troll vote, Robbed. they will they will go for it. Troll? How's that a troll? Well, because he did Logan take... sacrificed his seat for the good of the team. Yeah, because at the end of the day, when we get to the final grades at the end of the year and our half-term report or whatever we're going to call it, it is the average. So we have to take it as a Carlos Science where, you know, you could say, oh, give him a five, but then you know, that could affect his grade massively. So I think it has to be. NA for Logan Sargent, poor bloke. Alex Albon, qualified 12th, started 12th, finished 11th. I have gone for a four out of 10. Just to, to cover it off, he finished obviously 11th. And that is a 
decent result for a Williams. Good result, I'd say. Probably, you know, if that's a normal race, I'm giving him a 7 out of 10. I think I have to be harsh here that he has put, essentially, his team down to a one-car team. And also the whole criticism on Williams and all the pressure that he's put on his team, I think he has to kind of suffer in the Tommy the Tommy grade, which I'm sure he'll be losing loads of sleep over. But I think it has to I think it has to kind of knock it down because um he's put his team in a very awkward and difficult position and he deserves to be punished. Okay. Well we're about to get saucy <laughs> here, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, put your seatbelts on. Because it's time for me and Tommy to fall out. Uh, I've gone for a 6 out of 10 for Alex Albon. Um, it's an interesting angle that you've taken there that Alex has put this on the team. What I would say is that it's the team's fault for not having a spare chassis. Yes, Alex has made a mistake, bottomed out on the kerb, and he's gone in the wall. That is 100%, you know, that is his fault. I'm not going to downgrade him because Williams can't offer them a spare car, which is the least that they can, or a spare chassis, or whatever it might be, which is the least a Formula 1 team should have to do. Uh, during a, a Formula One weekend. The fans gave Alex a six. <laughs> Esteban Ocon next, qualified 15th, started 15th, finished 16th. Oh, I'm so, I'm so bored of how bad Alpine are. I've gone for a five. He was unlucky, obviously, to have a tear off stuck in his rear brake duct, so had to pit again. He did medium, hard, hard, hard. Ended up in last place. We don't see anything of them. Ocon and Gasly still seem very comparable in terms of, of, of pace and generally probably being one of the closest driver pairings on the grid. And yeah, they're right at the back languishing, so I, I'm not going to give them any worse than that. I've gone for a 6 out of 10 for Esteban Ocon, a cheeky extra point for making it into Q2 with that tractor of a car, um, which he was celebrating like it was a win, um, which I think was genuine, but also maybe a little bit of like... Haha, <laughs> Gasly, I got through. Oh, 100%. Um, <laughs> it's nothing to do with the position. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely stuff. The fans gave Ocon a five. Pierre Gasly, qualified 17th, started 17th, finished 13th. I have given Pierre Gasly a five out of 10, and that is because it is the most normal, average <laughs> drive, really. You know, he's, he's not done particularly amazing in qualifying, and while 13th, for an Alpine sounds incredible. He only finished ahead of essentially people that had absolute nightmares. I've gone for a five out of 10 for, for Gasly as well. I don't you know, it's by the by, maybe. Nah, actually screw it, Ocon gets a six. You've, 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 you've absolutely, you've, you've, you've won me over there. Sorry, editor, but I've, I'm gonna change my, my, my grade to a six for Ocon. Uh, but as for Gasly, yeah, quiet race. He was up in, I think, eighth at one point, but that was, I think, without having stopped and that was, you know, probably had a nosebleed with how high he was up uh, in an Alpine. Um, but yeah, uh, then fell fell away to 13th. Uh, so a 5 out of 10. And the fans also gave Gasly a 5. Lance Stroll. Qualified 9th, started 9th, finished 6th. I have gone for a 7 out of 10 for Lance Stroll. Very quiet race, but a decent one. Uh, gained a couple of places early on. Um, pitted quite aggressively uh, early at the start. Uh, obviously then got promoted after... Alonso was a cheeky boy and Russell was a cheekier boy into the wall. Uh, so that, that got him up to sixth. And yeah, I don't think it was anything special from Lance, but he'll absolutely take a, a sixth place. That's for sure. Yeah, I've gone for a seven out of 10 for Lance Stroll. Uh, it is more of what he should be doing, you know, not finishing too far behind Fernando Alonso. Yeah, a quiet race from him, really. Uh, but P6 is a is a good result for, for Aston. And he didn't qualify terribly as well. So no, well done, Lance. Exactly. You know, getting into Q3. Well done, sir. The fans also gave Lance a seven. Fernando Alonso. Qualified 10th, started 10th, finished A. I've gone for a seven out of 10. His qualifying uncharacteristic that he made you know, a mistake and uh, seemingly damaged his car. Yeah, in the race... It was a it was a good drive, and then of course at the end his tactics, whichever way you look at them, I've looked at them as, I think, it's cheeky and naughty. I think if there was runoff at that corner and George runs wide, um, and it's not a crash, it's not even investigated. But that's you know that's. But hey, the stewards for... didn't factor in the fact that there was a crash, mate. It says it in the report. 
<laughs> which is, is mental because they did. BS. Yes, it's absolute rubbish. I don't think it's like absolutely scandalous. So, yeah, of course you don't. You're a Fernando fan. <laughs> Uh, I've gone for a 7 out of 10 as well for Fernando. He was having a great race. Uh, Perez obviously got past him very quickly, but then he was... He didn't fight Perez at all and then utilised those four DRS zones beautifully. Of course, he also uh, gained under the, the virtual safety car as well. Uh, and he was having a great race up until the point of the George Russell thing, uh, which, of course, uh, put him down to P8 in the end. Uh, the fans also gave Fernando Alonso a 7. Oscar Piastri qualified 6th, started 5th, finished 4th. I have gone for 7 out of 10. It's a, it's a, I mean, it's a low grade considering he's finished 4th again. But I also feel like there was a little bit left on the table. He made that mistake at the penultimate corner, which cost him a bit of time. I think he ended up finishing around 12 seconds behind Lando, uh, as in obviously not finishing, finishing, because there was a VSC that came out, which extended the gaps massively. But he was around 12 seconds behind his teammate come the crash on the final lap. So there was still a little bit left out there for Oscar, perhaps just struggling with that race pace ever so slightly. But still a very good drive. McLaren looking very promising. I've gone for an 8 out of 10 for Oscar Piastri. A good drive, obviously, you know, he was running ahead of Lando thanks to the, the pit stop, of course. but And then they, they did the swap, which I imagine is disappointing for him. But he is looking a lot more like he's on a better pace. Very slight mistake. Um, I don't think it cost him too much, though, uh, realistically. So yeah, Oscar Oscar's doing a, a, a very good job this year, I think. He's looking a lot more uh, solid and, uh, yeah, exciting driver indeed. Uh, the fans gave Oscar an eight. Lando Norris qualified fourth, started third, finished third. I've gone for a nine out of 10 for Lando Norris. Very good drive, getting the most out of the car, very quick, probably has those thoughts in his head of like, why weren't McLaren competitive when Max has uh, <laughs> managed not to uh, finally have a, a breakdown or why couldn't his car have broken down in the many, many times last year that he was running second. I've gone for a 9 out of 10 as well for Lando. I think that McLaren let him down ever so slightly with the strategy. I feel like P2 was absolutely on the cards. Lando was putting in a performance that could have warranted him P2 rather than P3. So that's why I've gone for a 9 over a 7 for, for Oscar, uh, because I feel as though there was, again, a little bit left maybe from McLaren's side uh, for Lando. So, um, so yeah. But still a great drive on the podium. He said he was he's, he's excited about the prospects for the rest of the season. McLaren, you know, can they take another step forward soon? Uh, I'd, I'd love to see it. The fans gave Lando a 9 out of 10 as well. Carlos Sainz qualified second, started second, finished first. A 6 out of 10 for Carlos Sainz. Don't feel like he sang Smooth Operator loudly enough down the, the, down the team radio. Didn't actually remember until his... Uh, Radio engineer came over there. Of course it's a 10 out of 10. Carlos, I would give him an 11 if I could, because that was miraculous. Clearly, whatever went on during that surgery, they've installed some upgrades. Carlos, I cannot commend his performance more. He saw the opportunity, he took it. Qualifying was where he won the race on Saturday. Charles Leclerc tried to win the race in qualifying many, many times and qualified brilliantly many, many times, but the opportunity did not come up. Carlos qualifies brilliantly, and boom. So, so happy for him. Uh, what a way life can change uh, in, in the space of two weeks. Yeah, I've gone for a 10 out of 10 as well. It's a no-brainer, 10 out of 10. It's funny that we, we mentioned Singapore in the race review and how that was such a banger and it was such an intelligent drive. This one was still a, a 10, but he didn't really... It's not not saying he didn't have to do anything he just wasn't under any pressure but that was because he drove so well and was just managing the gap yeah it just made it look so easy and yeah what a what a comeback and insane to think that if he'd done the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix he could be leading the world championship magnificent uh, and the fans agreed 10 out of 10 Charles Leclerc qualified fifth started fourth finished second I've gone for an 8 out of 10 for Charles Leclerc, which may sound a bit harsh when he's finished second on the road, uh, which is obviously a very good result and is basically... And off the, the road, mate. What do you mean? Finished, off, <laughs> finished second Don't on the road. Don't say off the road. No, no, uh, no, but you wouldn't finish second on the road as if there was like post-race penalties oh, or something. Oh, right, no. <laughs> um, yeah, finished second. 
he's going to be kicking himself with the qualifying mistake. I've gone for an 8 out of 10 as well because sadness. Sadness has uh, just taken over here. Uh, how many front rows did he have in a row? Was it 7 or 8 he'd had in, in a row? 8 in a row, yeah. 8 front rows in a row. And the, the one, one time, time he doesn't, Max's <laughs> car blows up. That is ridiculous. And the fans also gave Charles an 8. George Russell qualified 7th, started 7th, did not finish. Oh my god, this grade is one of the most difficult grades I've ever had to give. And I am going to give him a 5 out of 10. This is not Singapore last year, in my eyes. The stewards also agree that there were external factors as to why George crashed, although they did not take part any of that in their stewards report. They did not see the George Russell crash, apparently. Just, just to clarify. I do feel sorry for him a little bit. Alonso has chefed him and chefed him very hard, uh, but chefed him slightly too hard. It's, it's sad because George was having a decent enough race. He was outperforming Hamilton all weekend. I do feel for him. That's why I'm not giving him a one or a two, but I am going to downgrade him a little bit because he lost the car and crashed it into the wall. Yep, I've given him a four out of 10. So slightly harsher, but yeah, not Singapore harsh. I agree with you that it's not completely on his own, made a mistake that has completely cost him a massive result. That's why I was so harsh on him in Singapore. This time, I think there is some responsibility of him. You know, he's crashed the car in that situation, but it is a difficult situation to be in. It's probably one of those moments where you could replay it many, many times. And I think it's probably like 50-50 if he <laughs> crashes or not. It's a shame for him because he's been driving well. Hamilton's been struggling and, and George was on for a good result again. And it would have been quite, quite the statement based on the race that Hamilton had. Oh, Frank's not happy either, as you can hear in the background. Uh, the fans gave George Russell a six. Lewis Hamilton qualified 11th, started 11th, and did not finish. I have gone four, a four out of 10. He, of course, retired from the race, no fault of his own. However, qualified poorly, made a, you know, he went off at turn one at one point, struggling. He just did not look like the Lewis Hamilton that we know throughout the whole weekend. It looks like he's really struggling with that Mercedes car. He'll 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 bounce back. It's just, yeah, a, a really poor weekend from Hamilton. Yeah, not great. Uh, I've given him a four out of 10 as well, mainly because we didn't finish. I would have given him a five, but then uh, he wasn't having the best of times up until that point either, hence the uh, slight downgrade as well. Uh, where he would have finished, who knows? Start on the soft tires, which is one of the strangest decisions I think I've ever seen um, because they lasted. Screams desperation, doesn't like, it, of them trying it literally was. to perform. It felt like it was a soft tyres, try and gain some positions and hope for a safety car, which, you know, is that is that what Mercedes are now? Is that is that what we're doing here? Four out of 10 for Lewis, and the fans also gave him a four. Sergio Perez qualified third, started sixth, finished fifth. I've gone for a five out of 10 for Sergio Perez because uh, it was a disappointing weekend, a really disappointing weekend, because he, he should and could and would have, had he delivered a good performance, been leading the world championship. These are the moments where you go, Perez has to be there. He makes a mistake in qualifying by uh, blocking Hulkenberg. Had he started third, might have been a different story, but instead starts sixth, a little bit stuck in the pack. Then when you get into the race, he loses a position to Russell at the beginning, and it just makes his, his race a lot more difficult. And then... You know, we hear that he picked up some damage passing Alonso. We don't know what quantifiably the amount of lap time he lost per lap. But still, to finish 35 seconds off the, the win, it's it's really it's a disappointing result. This performance was a bit concerning, hence the 5 out of 10. Yeah, I've gone for a 5 out of 10 as well. It is incredibly disappointing for Perez because he would have been leading the World Championship had he done a good job, like you say. And this was his opportunity, Max rarely retires, rarely has problems, hopefully bounces back, but it makes me concerned that is this now going to be a pattern where he does start the season all right and then sort of slowly drops off and off and off and off. Uh, the fans gave Perez a five as well. Max Verstappen qualified first, started first, finished for... Wait, that says DNF. <laughs> Unbelievable. Is this real? Personally... I think that it should be a non 
like an NA, like a Logan Sargent, because, and, and this is from both sides, because if you go straight down the middle and give him a five, it's completely unfair, unfair because you're knocking his grade down enormously on the average. And equally, he's absolutely smashed everyone in qualifying, had, you know, a thing through wasn't his fault. So if you give him a 10, it seems almost ridiculous, even though it kind of is a 10 out of 10 drive, but the guy's done one racing lap properly. I think the problem here is like, it's a, it's a really difficult one to grade and it does have to be like circumstantial because if, say Logan Sargent was winning the race. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, say how Lo- are you say Lo- bringing say- Logan into okay. this? I know, I just love the guy. Say Logan Sargent did an unbelievable qualifying and he got five laps into the race and he was running like second and his engine blew up. I think we would give him a 10 because you're like, well, what, you know, he did everything he could. But in this situation, it does seem kind of ridiculous to give Max a 10 when he's done one racing lap. Okay, well, what what we should do, right? We give two two scenarios here and everyone in the comments on youtube or uh, can let us know because we can't whether it's na or the vote we give yes so we need it's so like the top comment and the top voted comment of whether it should be na or a grade for max verstappen whatever that might be so if you are grading him up until the point he dnf'd he's he's it's a 10 because the only reason he lost the lead was because he he had a problem with his right rear or whatever it was and then and went straight on so it's either a 10 or an NA. Let us know in the comments. The fans gave him a five. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. Like, it's just completely unfair. What are unfair. the fans giving him a five for? That's crazy. So yeah, okay, cool. Let us know and we will do whatever you guys decide. Finally, who is our P1? Who's going to get P1? It's going to be Carlos Sainz for me. It has to be. I know that Yuki also got a 10, but Carlos, for me, absolutely, what a man. Uh, for me, it has to be Yuki Tsunoda. Both brilliant drives. Carlos's comeback was was amazing. But yeah, I think a, a, a great performance from Yuki in the midfield. And maybe, but yeah, it's gonna, if he carries on having performance, performances like this, it could be very fascinating, the Red Bull situation, I think. Thank you, as always, for just being such a wonderful P1 community and turning up for our podcast, for our content, no matter where you are in the world, our Twitch watch-alongs. It is uh, a dream job and one that we we never get normal. Normal? We never feel normal. We never, we never, it's never normalized, is it, Tommy? When we, especially when you tell people what you do for a living, you're like, jeez, yeah, that's true, isn't it? It's mad. Yeah, it is very but mad. But thank you. Uh, Formula One is back. Ferrari are back. There's a world championship fight on our hands. And let us know if Verstappen deserves a 10 or an NA. It's as simple as that. And that is it. Thank you, everybody. See you soon. (laughs) Lots of love. Bye. Bye.